the preview, but hasn't really had the results yet to register more than one win on the Pro Series. So two buys already in this tournament, so this is actually the furthest he's ever made it, this last 32 stage in five attempts on the Pro Series. As helpful a draw as that is, that's not really the way he wants to do it. He wants to be doing it by winning on the table. Christoph, completely the other end of the rankings, won the last event, so coming in to this one, brim full of confidence, you'd assume. Yeah, it was a good result. I think that um, I commentated on the last 32 match um, of Christoph in the last event, and it was possibly one of the worst standard matches I've ever watched in my life, if I'm being completely honest and brutal. But, you know, that just goes to show that, you know, one match doesn't define you know, your entire performance. And um, to go on to win any Ultimate Pool event, as we know, is uh, a great achievement. And one that you do expect now of, of Christoph. Uh, with his CV, but he plays extremely solid to get the win. And it, like I say, and I said in the preview, it'd be one of them now where he, he can relax a little bit knowing he's got that title. However, he's not the kind of animal to rest on his laurels. He, he'll want more events, so he's he's not travelling all the way from France with the commitments that he have with his you know businesses and, and pool things over there to just make the numbers up. So he's he, he'll certainly be here to win every time he comes over. Long journey, of course, for both of these players. Yeah, coming over from Morocco. He's taken these well so far. Maybe just slightly over on that last positional shot, but able to drop the ball into the centre. Still a little bit of work to be done. If you can clip this one into the middle, I'm going to have to double the top one of these. They looked at the the angle for the middle, so I think he can. It's a natural angle to drop into these two here, and I'll shot. Ooh. A little bit of work to do now to try and get underside the eight ball and get sort of where the middle of the table with the cue ball so he can play the yellow into the top left hand pocket as we look at the table. But it depends on the angle he has here because I think he's just off straight. It's a very, very difficult shot to play. The ball wasn't there, it'd be OK, but he's got a very narrow margin to work with. You see how he's, he's playing that there with with a lot of left-hand side, and he's pinching the pockets as well. He's been a little bit unfortunate, a little bit further there, and he, was, he had a shot at least, but he's now got no shot. And that's the issue now that, of course, even if he gets out of this snooker, I can't see him potting the yellow, and all the balls are there for Christoph to take. So that is the danger of, of these attacking rules, that if you miss your chance, you really do get punished. You know, It's not like the old rules where you can cover a pocket and you've got an advantage that that's not the case in international rules which in my opinion makes it be a better game yeah if you're going to go first in any clearance you've got to be sure you're going to get it because you see the position of the red balls as you say this is not really in a good position to fleet this yellow so very likely to leave Kristoff with something it's an extremely good effort but I don't think the angle was there Look at these balls, exactly what you want for your first frame. Just a nice practice position. Clear up six open balls. And that is sometimes the trouble when you've not been winning that much in a tournament series. You're perhaps a bit short of confidence. You maybe start going for finishes that aren't quite there just because you want to make something happen. Christoph's definitely not someone that does that, though. He's a very methodical player. I mean, that's not to say he's not attacking. He's got a sort of methodical... Q action. He can sometimes play in a pretty positive way, but he's a really experienced match player. He's not going to give you anything silly. Extension, please. Surprise he's gone this way a little bit. I thought he took the one to the left middle first shot, because that was the most awkward ball out the lot. Yeah, maybe he thinks it's a bit tight to the middle, but I agree, that's the, the one he's going to have to get back for. So he wanted to come right over the table there to land on, you know, right behind that, and he's, due to how the ball's skid on this cloth, he's not got there. It's almost like you have to take the pace out of them kind of shots to, to get the cue ball moving, as, as silly as that might sound. 
That's definitely one of the shots that's most different between playing these tournament tables and some club tables. It's, as you say, they skin off the cushion, so hard to get hold of that kind of shot. So he's going to have to reroute. Wanted to take the ball down the left cushion, but it's going to have to come back for that. He's without a shadow of a doubt on the wrong way about these. I'm sure he'd be the first to admit. I think you might see him go into this now. Yeah, the fact this cue ball's close to the cushion, if he had more of the cue ball to play for, it would be an easier positional shot here. But Even though he's got an OK angle, it's just going to be hard to... I don't think he's going to want to dig right down on it. Yeah, so as you forecast, have to run into it. He's played it well, but he's been a little bit fortunate with the cue ball there. Very, very nearly found the off in the middle. Just be simply because he went the wrong way. But, I mean, even though he's probably going to knock these in and get the finish, sometimes that can be a bit of a telltale sign about how a player's feeling. And if he's not taking the balls in the right way, you can't keep getting away with that. Um, you know, even there, he's played a poor shot, really. He's played now into a blind pocket with the eight ball. I mean, he should get it, but he's, he's not sort of quite shot. But it is the first frame. You know, I'm being sort of uber critical here. Yeah, he's turned a very routine finish into one that's looked fairly challenging. He's left a missable eight ball, but he hasn't missed it. Look at the smart rack. Operation for the first time this weekend. Great new innovation. Shows Ultimate Pool always trying to take the game forward, find the best possible technology. Yeah, they look the part, don't they? Yeah, somehow <laughs> everything in black, they branded it the black edition. Just looks cooler on the table. Actually, we've seen a good quality of breaking. We've seen very few breaks where the balls haven't been well racked. I mean, generally, obviously, you're a top class refereeing team, but you occasionally see the odd dead rack. But actually, we've seen very little of that this weekend. You know what? These aren't a bad split. They've they've actually landed a little bit nicer than what you you would originally think. Part of the cue ball in the middle of the table, which is nice. But everything here's got a pocket. Was such a big pocket there with the yellow. It made that so much easier. But I mean, yeah, I mean everything goes. You've got to fancy these. I'd be sort of playing this one over the pocket now and try to maybe just glance the eight ball slightly and leave yourself the one in the middle of the table. The eight ball's a good target because that opens up everything positionally. Hmm. Oh, this is an interesting shot. Yeah, I can understand him trying to get on the one here on the left-hand side of the table, but now he's got a far more difficult shot to play because he's not dead straight on it. So he's now got to screw this back six, seven inches to land on the one over the pocket. This is tough with a little bit of pace. He's played it well. He's played it very, very well. Again, another big target here now for him. I think he needs to play this with a little bit of left-hand side. And if he's going to hit the eight ball at top side of it, don't hit bottom side of it unless you're hitting it thick in the face and stopping the cue ball dead. Don't put all your eggs in one basket here is, is the advice I'd give. And that's why well, he's OK, he's good. What he didn't want to do there is go into kind of the other side of the eight ball and not leave himself on the shot that he's going to take now. Because then he's got a, a lot of distance to travel up and down the table to find the space. But it's perfect here, he's just going to drop into the yellow. Just kisses the yellow or just glances past it. Perfect. Yeah, nice shot. Played it nice. This has actually been a really good clearance, but it is one where he's had to be very precise. The reason we've called out a couple of issues with the shot choice is that he's played three or four shots in a row where there's been very little margin for error. As it happens, he's executed them all perfectly, but again, it's just the kind of thing that Go to the well too often. I mean, again with that one. He's fine, I think. I think he's just got away with it. Didn't want to go anywhere near them yellows. 
That's fine. That's very careless. Had a big margin for error to get past the yellow. I mean, in the end, it's turned out perfectly, and you can look at that and think he's actually taken those really well. Two matches that on a different day could have been a problem for him. Now he's got through to this one. If he can just add a win on top of that, it completely changes the weekend. He's done what he needed to, which is pot a ball. Not, not very well hit break. You can see how much spin is on the cue ball. It's yeah, just watch what the cue ball does here, and it's still, it's probably still spinning now. Just avoids the in off. Spin, spin, spin. And look at this, it just keeps spinning. And why we say that's not a great hit break, it's because he cued across that slightly, didn't find the centre of the cue ball, which is why a lot of the power was effectively wasted. The cue ball spinning around on its own axis rather than driving through the pack. Bad chance this, but it's one of those ones that's just a little bit of a testy clearance. When you're under this much pressure with the match situation, you ideally want the ball a bit more open. Play that well. It's got the middle of the table opened up. Just a question of how he lands on the ball at the top left of the table. Yeah sort of almost seems a little bit desperate here because he's had the chances and he was obviously 5-2 up thinking well what, what's happened and now he's kind of taking finishes here that aren't really there and try and force an angle in or is he just going to take his medicine and play it? I mean I don't really see what he's going to do here let's try and stun this and get the red out of the way Well, we'll never know. I mean, it didn't look like even if he took anything like that line and missed the red, he was still didn't look like he was going to be able to see enough of the yellow to pot it. Just almost like he's giving Christoph chances here. Well, it wasn't a bad effort. Oh, just caught the red first. Although the pace he'd run into it at, even if he'd just missed the red, I think he might have potted the yellow, but it could easily have been sneaking. Shot clock just getting to him there, just didn't quite have time to plan the end of the route. Christoph's going to be loving what he's seen here because he's going to be well aware that he's got his opponent under pressure now. He's played that pretty well. He's got all the balls into open potable positions now. Match clock not yet a factor, but the shot clock undoubtedly one because both of the players having to play outside their comfort zone. Surely this is the chance that Christoph needs. To get onto the hill, 6 5 up. Even with the pressure of the shot clock, nothing really to be done here. Slightly loose one there, just needed to get into that a bit more. Just trying to play with the chase of side to bring the ball a little bit higher up the table, which is ideally be a bit thicker on the ball that he's now potting. And as a result of that, he's had to play a cannon that he didn't want to have to play. It's gone a bit wrong. Still got a shot, but it's a way harder shot than it should have been. He's only got three seconds to play it. Well, under a lot of pressure, that's a fantastic shot. The pips counting down. So close to being a time foul, but he's pulled out a difficult cut. And he's ended up with perfect position on the eight ball. Just a glance at the shot clock. Pip's going off again. All about Chris and he loves it out there, doesn't he? Well, this is the thing. Certain players relish the big stage. You know, they're on, under the cameras. They've got a bit nice crowd out there, a bit of atmosphere. And there are some players that sort of shrink in it. And Chris is definitely no shrinking violet. 
You know, we see there played Chris last weekend in the Players' Championship and he was breaking just like that but wasn't getting a ball. So he'd be delighted to give himself a chance straight away. When we, I was commentating yesterday afternoon and uh, here on table one and, and occasionally we dropped over to table three where you, you were playing Cole Bedford. And that was a bit of a two in and throw in a match. You were quite a long way behind, got back into it and then just wasn't a be at the end. I was yeah, still in frame. It was one of them. I'd First couple of frames, the, the conditions and a bit of ring rust cut me, caught, caught me out. And then uh, Cole got on a bit of a run and blew me away early doors. And then a combination of my break and his break let me back into it and got back to 5 all. And, and then uh, Cole's hit two breaks with a dreaded cut break. And they were, I mean, you could turn your cue around the wrong way and play it with your weak hand and you'd get never sort of that easy. But he still had to hold himself together so because obviously he was under pressure at that point, so fair play to him, he, he managed to do that. So why do you try to cut break then, if it's that easy, if you're always guaranteed the ball, is it? Well, it's, don't like it. it's just a bit of a cop how I feel. I mean, I have used it, I'll be honest, I have, and I, and I went through a stage of using it, but you just feel better hitting the front, don't you? You hit them properly and there's a bit more skill to it. Um, yeah, it's Controversial. Yeah, I think th th there is divided opinion, but I think most players would say that there's a lot more skill to the front break. And My co-commentator, Simon Webb, he loves it, he loves the presenter. But Chris here, he's man that really doesn't like it, but he's fairly skipping through the yellows. Yeah, he's just under hit that touch, I'm not sure if he's quite on that. Well, we've got a little shake of the head, he's having a, a second look. It does a, look a bit dodgy. Yeah, he had a couple of feet to play in there, a couple more. Big margin for error, and he's, I mean, he's made it as awkward as it could have been. I just used the red. Here's yeah, he's navigated it well. Nice cue ball there as well, Dom. Yeah, yeah. He don't miss a trick, does Chris? He's he's very capable in his own right. think you think Tom Cousins will probably level the match there on that finish? But it's back to Chris Melling. You see there, he did get kicked by the red, but the cue ball was about to park itself in the middle of the table. But Chris has gone dry, so you have to say Johan needs to be getting this finish if he wants any chance in this match. It looks like he's lost a cue ball. Just OK. It's actually helped him out because he can go up for his... probably his most awkward ball on the table now. Well, you've got to, yeah, you've got to play up for the, the red on the top left-hand rail. If you can get straight behind, they can just pop that in and just drag the cue ball down for the other red in the middle, and then you can pick and choose where you go then. Yeah, then it's uh, pretty much routine. Pretty good. I always wonder, it's obviously we sort of take it for granted being based over here, but for the for the likes of Johan coming from abroad, having overseas and all that sort of stuff, it must be... Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's a lot of commitment to keep doing it, because I'm not sure... I'd want to be keep doing it. So then if you look at it this way, I mean, if you if you're in anywhere in Europe, you know, I I live in Cornwall. It took me five and a half hours to get here. I bet it took you and with a flight. I bet he got here quicker. Yeah, he yeah that's a fair point. You know, and Ooh, the flights are in the world's a lot smaller than it used to be, Don. That red shouldn't have gone in. Probably it was. Uh, it did wipe its feet, and he's in perfect position here. Just stops the white dead, and he can play the red into the centre. And obviously the one's just over the pocket. And then back for the black in probably the bottom left-hand corner where he's just part of that red. You see that nice. Well, this is a must-win frame, you feel, for Johan Atal. If he doesn't get this finish, he's going to be limited to the opportunity he's going to get from Chris, because yeah, Chris, Chris looks to be queuing well. He's queuing very well. We and said uh, bridging over the yellows. Yeah, a little bit awkward. I didn't know if he had enough just to punch through between the red, black and yellow just to get himself that bit closer. Did you pop this in with a little bit left hand side? Yeah, well, if he'd have come through that gap, he would have had a lot more control with, the, with playing it with a touch of side. Whereas you see there, he I just, just stopped short see enough. He's smile smiling. His face. He thought for a second he was going right but behind that yellow, but yeah. well, I, won't say, I won't say a word to him, Tom. This looks to be a, a big split. Oh, he's a bit unlucky to not see a red here. 
Incredibly, he's landed like, sort of in no man's land. It's a brilliant break. Yeah, the cue ball just got kicked at the end. He ain't got a ball, has he? No. He's got, I think the only thing he can play really is the red off the yellow in the top left. But I mean, that is incredible. He must be, he must be dumbfounded. Oh, I think the yellow goes, actually. I think it goes. Well, it cuts into the centre? Yeah, it goes between the reds. Well, he kind of forces his hand, doesn't he? Rather yeah, that's what he is. But, but, but this yellow, see the one between the eight ball and the red ball down here in the middle? That's a bit of a problem. He does have to... It does go, but he needs to land good on it. Could he not play this one at the top, get the cue ball down the table a little bit, so play the yellow into the left-hand left centre, centre, and then drop onto that red yeah. at the bottom, just below the other one, and he can... I can play oh, a plant, there's all sorts. Or would you kick into it? I mean, you can play this firm now. I think he sort of forced his hand here because he just under hit that. Well, you haven't got, as long as you make the pot, you haven't got to worry about knocking one of Chris Reds in because you, you know, you, you the, play the, on because it's yeah, a the rule set combination allows. shot. Yeah. So you can play this with force. Play that nice. A bit, a bit unlucky, the Reds just gone back where it started, really. It's, so I think, I think he's got to play it now. There's a glimmer of hope for Chris Melling yet to get to the table in his frame. I think he's got to play it now and come off the off the side cushion and land sort of blue spot to leave the natural angle and the yellow to the middle, but make the ball is first and foremost. He looks like he's screwing down for the red yeah, now, which big shot to be fair, is. if he screws down for it, he could play it as half a shot to nothing, but... He's been a bit unlucky there. That was a good effort. By no means an easy shot. What he has, do, has done is made the reds a little bit harder for Chris to navigate round by covering yeah. that pocket. There is the option here. Chris could just play the loss of turn shot, first shot if he wanted, but as we I know, don't think it's his style. Chris don't tend to look for the safety option, which has Sometimes him well. can that be a mistake, though? Sometimes, yeah, if you let them back and they have a whack. And there are players that are really good, big potters that would look at that, say, that, that shot there. But then we saw with the games like with Declan Brennan playing Ian Alley last night, um, where Declan's played a good safety, and Ian Alley's potted two balls out of snookers and made the finish. And, and then, instead then of Declan going 3-1 well up, he's now 2 all. And following that, Ian's then broke and finished. So from Declan putting Ian Alley in his snooker, yeah. he's lost two frames from it. And that's it's incredible. As we mentioned earlier, that comes down to sort of the mental side of things. Where yeah. That happens in this game, and you, you have to deal with all that sort of stuff. And some players... I'm not saying Declan at all because he, he's more than capable of dealing with anything. But he's going with a skill shot. There is players that, yeah, this is kind of a free go because he can't really leave a great deal because you'll see him screw the cue ball across the touch. He's made it. And that looks to be match ball. That Surely Chris Mellon is not going to make another mistake. Yeah, he's fine. And this is. is pretty easy now as well. Oh. Did he have a kick there? He's I'm not sure. He sort of stood back at... It. He stopped and went he's upright. Now, he's now got a player shot, whereas before he hit that ball, it was four drop-ins. But now I think he's got to come on and off the bottom cushion, perhaps, and maybe two cushions around yeah, the back. He's with a bit of power. See him cranking bottom up. cushion, side cushion. There you go, he's played it perfect. What a lovely shot there from Mellon. Good the ball, back he goes from Chris. One careless error to let Johan. And there he goes. Out. Chris Mellon's into the last 16, beating Johan Atard seven frames to three. Gilbert joins me on commentary for this one. Luke, how are you, mate? Yeah, not bad, thank you. How are you? Yeah, no, good. It's been a great weekend so far. It's always a buzz of excitement when we get to the Pro Series compared to some of the other events we have. Obviously, 400 odd players here this weekend, so it's always good. Yeah, there's a big prestige around these events compared to. You know, perhaps maybe the Monday nights where it's a, it's a bit more fun on a Monday. Yeah. This yeah, very it's serious. Something about and this, everyone isn't it? everyone yeah. takes it very seriously, but it's a bit more fun. You accept the format for what it is. You come to these events and it, it's a proper tournament. Um, these are the ones that all the pros want to win. You know, everyone wants to win every single tournament, but you want to end your ultimate pool career saying you've won a pro series. Yeah, that's something about that's the main one. Yeah, winning a pro series at these weekend events is something very, very special. Something, of course, that we've seen Gareth do. And it's having another go for the title here. But Matt Cook having a good run so far this week. And it's going to be a tough nut to crack for Gareth, you feel. 
very good player, Matt. He um, sort of, I think he had a bit of a break from the game a few years ago. Um, and I remember when the World Rules Pool Tour was about, he come back, played then, and uh, he beat me, and I didn't really do a lot wrong. And it was kind of like, where's this guy come from? Um, and everyone had said, oh, he played years ago. Um, and I, I'd, I'd never, never heard of him. He played really well. Um, so. You know, when 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 players have such a long break away from the game, to to be able to come back, get back to a good level, and then compete in the pros is unbelievable. Really, him and Cameron Tolley are the two that stand out. Um, I think Cameron Tolley had like 20 years out of the game, and then come back, and he's now now in the pros. It's unbelievable, really. Yeah, it's it's something bringing them back, isn't it? They all want to be part of this and. I think the big thing for Matt is just getting a little bit of belief back. You know, obviously he knows he's a good player, but believing you can compete against some of the greats of all time and do it on this stage. And I think we're starting to see just that little early signs of that for Matt. I think what one thing you will notice with a lot of the, the pros now as well is that they all kind of just understand how good the level is around. So you need to stop beating yourself up about results and, and kind of just focus on your performance rather than the actual scoreline because I just spoke to Hitan actually and he lost 7-3 to Jack Whelan and he said, I've not missed a pot. Yeah. I've played one safety, it was a good safety, but Whelan's just knocked in an unbelievable finish and he's lost 7-3. He said, I've played really well. I said, and and that, that's a perfect example with, if you at the end of the season you look back and you think, oh yeah, I had that loss, I lost 7-3 there. You start to think, well, my season wasn't great, but He's at his performance is very good. Sometimes, and that's Almost the level we're playing at. Yeah, making sure. Yeah, I think it's, you're absolutely right. You've got to be, as we see, Matt make a very good start here. We'll come back to that point in a second. Just see him make it the perfect start, and you do feel like he will need to start well here against Gareth throughout the weekend. Probably as underprepared for a tournament in this version of the game as he has been for a while. But well documented, a lot of players coming back from China. Covered his first match yesterday, and his break was fantastic. And straight away here, because he does have, even though he's got an unbelievably powerful break, he does have these odd spells where it will just dry up for him at the wrong time. Yeah, and that, that's uh, another thing that people beat themselves up about is, is the break. And I just think I, I'm, I just laugh and I go dry now. Yeah. I just you just get to that point now. It's that there's a lot of luck. Well, making a ball is purely luck. But if you give yourself the best chance by hitting them as good as you can, controlling the cue ball, etc., then that's all that's all that you can actually aim for when you do break. That making a ball is luck. Um, that you, it's an awful lot of skill onto something to then have to get lucky as well, though, which drives you mad. Yeah, yeah. That you, you require a lot of skill to hit the break well consistently and control the cue ball well consistently. So that is why it beats people up. Um, but... If Gaz keeps getting splits like this, he's, he's going to take some stopping. Yeah. It's an interesting one for me, for Gareth, because he's coming over, he's doing something for the first time, and he announced it yesterday that he's recommitted to Ultimate Pool for the next couple of years as well, that he's going to mix the two games for the first time in his whole career. Last time, you know, when China first came around, he, he went wholehearted, played only Chinese eight ball, and Ultimate Pool brought, brought him back into the game. And part of that, obviously, was the fact he couldn't get to China for a few years. And obviously now it's fully opened up, but he is going to mix the games for the next couple of years. And interesting for me, I think actually we might see some brilliant peaks from from Gareth. You know, we might see him not as sharp in here and there, but his, you know, the ceiling for him is so high. And if he can come in in his own mind, you know, under less pressure. Matt, he would love love one like last time. He's not hit them as nice. He's still made a ball. Where's the cue ball tracking? And it's not going to reach the pocket. A little cluster on the left-hand side. Are they a plant? Are them reds a plant? Oh, he's come around immediately to have a look, and it looks very good. And I, and I can't really tell from this angle if we had a better view from the overhead. Can he can he track up straight away for that plant? Yeah, he can get their next shot. Yeah. This is perfect chance. Him. Just got to be careful with the plant that he doesn't put the red he's playing safe Extension at all. But I think he, he's almost. He's better going between the gap of the two yellows that are at the top of the table and landing near near the rail to play the palm because then you can't push it safe. He's going into the middle of the, of the table, yeah. Yeah, I like that a lot. 
some would screw into the yellow. I don't think I think he's played the gap. I don't think he's played into the yellow because if you go into the yellow, it's the only way you can go wrong. So he's exactly where I said he wanted to be. He can drop this plant, and he he, if he just hits the left hand side, the red's not going to move at all, and it will go to the top. Oh, he's missed it. He has had his opportunity. What damage has he done? Extension needed for Gaz. He's lost his chalk. Was he? Everything goes. I think it's a bit awkward though. The two nearest the triangle area, the one directly below the eight ball, and just to the right of it. That looks tricky. Has he got to play this off the rail for red? I, th I think it may go, but... There's a lot of benefit to playing it off the red, though, isn't there? Yeah, it may, it's too tricky, though. He can't play that, really. It should have dropped. It has, OK. Can uh, he clip this in and hold? He can, he can certainly clip it in, but I'm not too sure he can hold. Might use the red and then play it in the centre off the red. Oh, has he got away with this? Can he do that? No, I think I think he's only got the ball at the top. And he's yeah. chasing now. This finish is very tricky from here. Keep an eye on that clock as well. 124 left. Benefits using every second if you don't get out. Yeah, see, he, he's happy here. Oh, he's in off. Oh, my oh, word. Wow. That is disgusting. And Matt Cook has a chance. One minute left on the match clock then. An opportunity for a buzzer beater. He was actually just happy that he got the pot there because he probably thinks he's going to get a six red shootout. Yeah, because it runs the clock down, yeah. you know, nothing else. And Matt just has to hold himself steady here. 50 seconds is plenty of time for four shots. There's nothing in his way. This is the one. Yeah. Ultra slick cloth just doesn't want to run too far here. Just. Nice and slow. Oh, where's he going? He's okay. Is he? He's a, has he got to bump the eight? Or has he got? can he just come past it for it in the bottom right? I think that's the shot. So he chose to bump it and he's played it really nice. What looks to be a good victory for Matt Cook. Matt Cook is into the quarterfinals. We're going to be disappointed for a moment. It could have been a rare dry break, but one of the last balls rolling did find the pocket. Would have been criminal if it had been a dry break, because the balls were flying all around the table. Yeah, and yellows uh, will be his choice of colour. This is a good plant to play first, because it frees the pocket up for the other two on the side cushion, so especially if the one furthest out from the side cushion goes past the one nearest the cushion, then these are pretty pretty simple. Yeah, it didn't necessarily look much that first shot, but actually, as you say, opening that pocket up is pretty valuable. So you're going to clear the two at the bottom of the table first. He's got a choice, really. I think the two on the sides will probably be his last two balls, so he's just got to decide whether he can get out for the yellow in the middle of the table to one of the middles or leave it to the top left or play on the one top right next and then play the, the yellow in the middle of the table bottom left and screw over for the other two. But I think you'd like to play the one you know, near the top of the um, racking line. Just, just got, he hasn't quite gone far enough for the middle, so he might go top right next. And then probably just play um, the two on the right before um, the one in the middle of the table. So, as I said, there's loads of different ways you could go about this. service resumes it seems for Tom. I know he's obviously been away in China and I did speak to him on the phone last week and he said he was he weren't hitting the ball great on the English table when he came back but from what I've seen so far um, I don't think he's got too much to worry about. He seems to be hitting it pretty nice and controlling the cue ball so he's going to be the one to beat again. Yeah it's quite tough adjusting I mean, not just the physically adjusting he's been away and probably a 
bit jet lagged, although he's been back a while now. But it's a slightly different game, even though it is eight ball pool still. Much heavier cue ball. Slightly different timing. As you say, I seem to have remembered how to play this game. So, break number three for Tom Cousins. The first two have been exactly as ordered. Well, if anything, hit that a bit harder. Would you like that one? Three yellows and two reds down. At first glance, I think he's, he's got a plant first shot on reds. No, he's got one to the. He's got a direct one actually to the middle. It's one of those ones. He's almost potted so many balls that he's got less choices. If that is a good plant, if that plant is set, which it's not, but that would have been a good choice. Because if you look, I know it's offset, but where he is, it's it's fairly straight from where he is. So that's not a bad shot choice because there's not much gap between the balls. So it's fairly easy. But he's choosing to play this one. I actually think this is more of a difficult shot. Probably made to look easy though. The reason I say it's more difficult because he couldn't ever get high enough, I don't think, to just drop it in. So he's going to have to play another. He's going to have to punch this in again into the middle, just maybe stun off the top cushion. And play for one of those two reds at the top to the right middle. Yeah, he made that last shot look easy, but it, it really wasn't. Oh, you could just get there. That was a good shot. Yeah, and going back to his break, I think um, before he went away to China, he was sort of more time in the break, and it looked like he weren't hitting, hitting it so hard. Obviously, when you go and play Chinese eight ball pool, you need to really time it and get a lot of power through the break. So I think he's sticking with that on this table, and uh, yeah, I think he'll um, reap the benefits from that as well. Unfortunately for the rest of us. Yes, I was going to say, I <laughs> don't think anyone wants to hear he's improved his brain. <laughs> I mean, he's pretty much the only player that you would say really consistently pots off the break, and it is, it's astonishing if he doesn't. Like, there's a lot of other people with very good breaks, but oh, he's over hit this. He'll still be fine, but. Yeah, you, yeah. It was always better to be shorter than longer there. Yeah, if he's short, he can get around two cushions, but now he's going to have to just nip into this. And there's another example of his touch, just to kill the red in. As little movement as possible on the black and the white. Thank you very much, five now. Sometimes it is just those last few marginal gains that you need. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That cue ball was high in the air. And Luckily landed in a good spot that it stayed on the table. I think it knocked a ball in as well. There. <laughs> what so a break ev everything, was that. Everything is going for Tom. He's played flawless, but... Yeah, everything's gone for him. And if he... These, red, these yellows are gone. I'm calling it now. There's no commentator curse going here. These are gone. Tough day at the office for Dan Ethan Lees. He hasn't done a whole lot wrong. It just feels like he hasn't really been a major participant in this match. I think he's going to play the plant here now. And just hold the white for the for the yellow that he's nearest. Hopefully the this yellow will just bounce off the cushion. Oh, he's gone into the red. That's fair enough. Just got to decide when is best to play this yellow to the bottom right, and he might even play it now if he can get onto the yellow to the right middle. But you no, know, he's just gonna he might move the red out of the way. No, he's left the red there. Yeah, I'm just trying to find problems to be honest, because that's what you're supposed to do in the commentary tree box, isn't it? But he's just gonna avoid all these reds and leave the white in the middle of the table, and pick whichever way you want to go. Yeah, he's certainly not finding too many problems on the table. 23 minutes of this match played. And it looks for all the world like it's going to be a 7-0 win for Tom Cullins. 
and this is very on, ominous. It's not just the scoreline, but it's the manner of the victory. It's just completely frozen down. Ethan Lee's away from the table. Yeah, it's just when he's got the break going, and you can see that he's got his touch. You know, that's the uh, that's the danger signs to everyone else. The warning signs. You know that you got to do something special to stop him. And this eight ball to complete a quality win. That's something very special we've just seen there from Tom Cousins. Christoph Lambert versus Ian Alley for a place in the semi-final. French flamboyance of Christophe Lambert. He's about to break us off in frame one. It's an absolute pleasure to be joined by Sean Storey. Thanks, Tony. And Sean, how do you see this match shaping up? Oh, Ian, Ian's buzzed through uh, a lot of good players. So, um, and Christophe obviously won the last event here. So this is a cracking little lineup. Huge break from Christophe. No friends and lovely chance on red. So I think he's only, he can only see a red initially. Yeah, we'll have another look at Christoph's break. He's hammered that. Yeah, he fairly got into them. He'd be a bit disappointed he didn't get anything off that break. Wasn't a huge explosion, to be fair. I don't think the explosion was in line with how well he hit them, but they might not have been fully tight. It's very hard to rack them tight on here. I don't know how much experience you've got on this super fine cloth. I know you've played the, the, the yeah, one seniors event for your comeback. It, it does slide. And, and it it can catch you out at any time. Um, what I do know is you don't have to put too much effort into to move the cue ball about. Yeah, for backspin, I agree, it's grippy. Ooh, it's not where I want it to be, is it? Well, he's landed nicely onto the one in the centre there. I don't think he meant to be there. He's he meant to be good down the bottom of the table. That, but I don't think he needed it. No, <laughs> so you're right. I thought he was going to drift down to the bottom first, but this isn't a bad red to get rid of. It was a tough one to land on. I don't know if it goes bottom right, but. And it is a good one to get out of the way. Listen, the one on the bottom cushion is tricky reds. Let's try to pinch the pocket. Good shot. That is a good shot. That yellow is in the way now. But, um, I think he just slide there with a bit of right-hand side and bring the cube up the top of the table. A bit. <laughs> I think he will glance the edge of the yellow. I think if he avoids the yellow, he's very close to an off in the middle. So maybe he'll use the yellow, just land somewhere below that left middle pocket. So he's got one to the top right then. Oh, he's going with left. He is. Oh, he's he's going to hit this full ball short this yellow. Spotted it thick to, to maybe create an angle there. It's a great shot. He should be one good pot here, and he's he's okay. Don't know if he'll stun into the eight ball or the red nearest this one he's playing. He is playing a cannon. Played it well. Yep. And this is now a formality finisher in Ali. Yeah, looking at his results, he's obviously been flying through the field, I think. He's had a lot of tough matches and come through all of them, so... Well, I had the pleasure of commentating his, on his game when he played Declan Brennan yesterday, and he was in a bit... Very early on, he was in a bit of trouble. He's 2-1 down, and Declan's put him in a snooker. He's come out of that snooker part of the ball, snooked himself again, come out of that snooker part of the ball, cleared up, then broke and cleared up, and that sort of really did Declan in. And <laughs> Declan's thinking he's going 3-1 well up, and all of a sudden he's 3-2 down, but he's playing very well, Ian Alley. He's so dangerous. Yeah. Well, this is a we'll psychological thing game. with it, though. Yeah. You know, you could be... Well, myself and Dom Cooney, we, we commentated earlier, and we, we were saying about matches, because Dom played Cole Bedford yesterday, and he was 5-1 down, and then he got back to, f to five each. And you c he said he could see Cole's Cole co game completely changed because of having a big lead, you're quite happy. All of a sudden, your opponents come back, and it just completely turns on its head. And all of a sudden, you... from being in cruise control, you start twitching on balls and all this and the other. In the end, Dom was a little unlucky and Cole did, did get over the line 7-6. Yeah, I mean, Cole, Cole is one of those players where he does wear his heart on his sleeve a bit, which isn't ideal for Paul, but you know, a lot of players won't get battered by it. You know, they won't batter an eyelid to a mistake, or which is how you want to be. You, know, you want to be ready to take your next chance. No point thinking about the last chance. You need to be ready for the next one when you get one, so if you get one. But with Christoph, it was noticeable his brake started changing. As I was coming back, he started going straight in off the middle in the on the brake. You know, he couldn't he couldn't hit the brake like he was. So obviously he was dishing a lot in the early stage, and then suddenly you see the the twitching on the brake and stuff. It's just it is interesting the psychology of this game. I love it. 
don't think he's got the full pocket there. <laughs> there must I was be a very say. tight gap, but it'd be very handy if it did go. Because it is a problem ball. Played a lovely shot there. Yeah, played that, the perfect that weight. That is parked exactly where he wanted to. I think if you can just, just hold this and then play a cannon on the... So this left middle next, then right middle, then play a cannon on the yellow below this red, below and to the left. I'm not sure if he's come too straight now for that, but that would have been his plan. And that would free up that other red that he was just looking at a minute ago. Yeah, there you go. Play that cannon. And the eight ball goes left middle, so now he's just got to mind his work. What is his quick fire stuff, Sean? I think if he... Does he risk going over to the left cushion now? A bit of left-hand side anywhere, sort of around the left middle pocket. Leaves a plant. I'm not sure. Oh, he's playing up the top. Yeah, that's fine. I didn't know if he could see enough to play up there, so... No problem. A little bit skinny on the plant now, but... The so he's got a guided cable through the yellows and back again. Yeah, he's created a lovely gap for it. He just played that with a bit more pace to, to just create this gap. You see he's going to go these four yellows in the bottom right side. He's going to go twice in between those. But that is a gap he just created with that last shot. There you go. Once, twice. Brilliant shot. Absolutely perfect. Very good vision. Sees the game so quickly. Just still got to mind your work on this shot, but it should be fine. You just you can you can uh, end up looking silly on those and track towards the eight ball directly, which would have left him in trouble. But he just about got there. Very nice finish there from me and Ali. There you go. Not that I'm a massive baseball fan, but it's just <laughs> it's a piece of history. There you go. Anyway, back to the pool. Good break. And what's his reward? One yellow to work out. Well, I think it's going to be pretty yeah, easy I think to work that out. You, think could, you can disregard the reds with those three at the bottom of the table. I wouldn't want anything to do with them at all. Like you said, it's one yellow to negotiate, but it's got plenty of other yellows to uh, <laughs> See Christoph's to use. reaction in the background there is fascinating. It's like, oh, it's potted again. But that's where it's come and been won a loss. If, he, if, if Ian Alley goes out here, it's been won a loss or Christoph's break. Well, massively. I mean, Ian's just had first chance so many times. Does this yellow come out? playing this can he catch enough of it yeah he played it well well the balls are there for Ian Alley to make the semi-final he has a, just bundles that a bit further than ideal but um, he should still be fine it has sneaked into the 15 second shot clock as well here so he doesn't want to be chasing too much you don't get much time to reroute those two yellows at the bottom just need you need to get good on, on it otherwise you're playing a cannon which isn't ideal you need to land somewhere on the line between the yellow and that red above the left middle. Somewhere along yeah. there would be straightish on it, but they could probably, I don't think you can land dead straight, but you could punch through the gap then of the yellow and the eight ball for the last two yellows in the same pocket. Just got there, so he's fine, he's fine. Anywhere near the red now, just on and off the cushion. Land somewhere near that red ball. And then, uh, yeah, the next two yellows will be in that bottom right corner. And he's as good as out for me, really. Christoph, he knows. The end is night. It's done. Ian Alley with a simple eight ball. This for a place in the semi final. In it goes. He should be taking on Ian Alley. I'm Tony Hall getting on. Pleased to be joined by the incredibly talented player, Declan Brennan. And Declan, this promises to be a great game. Stephen Tony, yeah, did what I did. Uh, Stevie is a good friend of mine, and obviously, apart from Tom Cousins, I think Stevie has to be the most and uh, most impressive player this year, and probably even last year as well, because we won two events. So. Uh, Stevie's unbelievable sort of consistency going on in this, this last goal. 18 months and he just doesn't seem to be letting, letting up anytime soon. Well I watched a bit of his quarter final against Matt Cook and Matt Cook by the way had, he's had a tremendous tournament took out some really big scalps Greg Ban, Gareth Potts yep. Craig Waddingham on, along the way Unbelievable yeah. And I spoke to him afterwards and, um, and after he lost to Stevie Dempsey and, and Matt Cook won three frames, he said I had three chances in the match and I took them all. Yeah. He said I couldn't do anything with him. Dempsey was sublime. Yeah, and Dempsey's just, he, he doesn't, uh, like Dempsey doesn't catch the eye like the, the likes of your Potts and Craig Waddingham's and stuff, but what he is is just 
very very solid match player doesn't play many careless shots doesn't take any massive risks plays the game properly and it gets rewarded every time really and any of them close games when the clock's ticking away I, I've always said Stevie's there like there's a shot there let's play it like not many players see that shot and that's just sort of sung this frame and his advantage now yeah clever shot there for Stevie Dempsey playing the loss of turn and like you say Declan his shot selection it always seems to be right yeah no that's not uh, that's not luck that's just great uh, that's just a great skill you know, it's great like awareness the awareness is um, without doubt he's probably the best in the world at it, you know, and nobody could argue against that because his results speak for themselves. Uh, well, we saw the guys just before the start of the match in at the top of the show there, and they're all tipping Stevie Dempsey to win the title. Yeah, right well, now. the one thing I'd say, um, I was at the game whenever Ian beat uh, Stevie, and it was actually my hometown in Urian. Right. Stevie had a couple of chances to win that match and ended up Ian came and won the decider and uh, things like that just you know you can, I don't know if people dwell on them sort of things but you sort of have your little bogey players and obviously that was a match that Stevie should have won so maybe maybe something can happen you know if somebody just sort of gets one over on you more times than, than you do and stuff like that well I was in the comments box for Ian Alley's Quarter final. Yeah, you're in. Against me as well. <laughs> yeah, against you as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I bet you didn't have much luck on the break. To be fair to you. Yeah, it was poor. And it was that frame where you've played a good safety. Yeah. Ian Ali's come out out of snooker, pot the ball, snooking himself again. Yeah. Come out, pot the other ball, and he's finished framing. You were looking like going three-one ahead. Yeah. And not only that, Ian Ali's then gone break and finish, and next thing you're three-two down. I'm yeah. Not played a shot. Yeah, of course. But look, like, that's that's the luck. That's the little bit of the luck you need. And, Especially in these events here, um, whenever the short races, the standards so good. Like you, you, them, when you look back on them wee things throughout the tournament, you know, you see, oh, like if that didn't happen, like we're, I mightn't have even got past that round. Just things happen for you whenever you get you're on a good run. Ian's made the most of it, so he's he's done he so well after that. Well, this first frame here is a big contrast to Ian Ali in the last round played Christophe Lambert from France, and that was just so quick the match. It was to and fro. Nobody got more than one frame ahead of each other, and it's all all dish. Yeah. But this has been a, a bit of a cagey opener. Yeah, it's just the way that the balls have came out off the break. Um, I would, this this sort of pulls out Stevie Dempsey. This is, this is Stevie's sort of bread and butter sort of frames. These he wins so many of them. Obviously great at uh, mapping out finishes and taking them out, but why he's so consistent is when it goes to these type of frames, he's a. Uh, He's a, he's a level above pretty much majority of the tour, maybe bar a few players, but he's one of the best at it. Yeah, he's very clever and he's got a great touch. Yeah, I think that probably comes from playing so much world rules in Ireland over the years. You know, you just sort of have that sort of defensive mindset at times and you can just sort of know when to tuck up and just just be patient. And w well, I remember Steve, he was, a, he was an Irish junior when I was playing in the, in the seniors team and he was players like John McMahon who I played with and yeah. uh, a, you know, a legend God rest, God rest his soul um, they all tipped Stevie for greatness they all said that the lad when he gets you know comes old he's going to go pro and he, you know yeah. they saw the future for him Yeah, and they've proved to be right yeah no without doubt um, obviously whenever I first started playing pool which would have been maybe about six years ago now yeah. Stevie would have been one of the top players in Ireland but it, at that time Stevie just didn't seem I think maybe with going through college, work and stuff, he's in America and he was sort of, now he's back home in Ireland, he's obviously married and he's got his kid and everything's just, he's more settled. I think now Poole's more of a focus for him, he's got a table in the house. He's uh, he's obviously playing whenever he can, I think, whenever he has a, an hour lunch break, he nips up and gets an hour on the table upstairs, which is always a help, so there's no doubt about it that uh, you can see the Stevie's and the amount of tournaments we're playing now as well, doing the match sharpness is there. Like it, you don't really need as much match practice anymore because you're so busy playing at the weekends, a lot of the weekends, that that's where your match practice That was the point that Chris Mellon actually yeah. made yesterday when he was in the comp box and he said, you know, talking about practice, he said, I don't have time to practice, I'm too busy playing tournaments for exhibitions. He said, not really. He said, my exhibitions are my practice. He said, so I don't really need to because I'm never putting my cue down. Yeah, no, totally. No. It can work both ways. I haven't really had much time because I was moving house there for the, these two events. 
and uh, so that, that's a bit of a nightmare. First time I've ever really had to move a house. Wow. And so, um, that's yeah, so it was a bit of a shock to the system. And then the the dog at home had nine pups as well, just on Monday there. So Nine? Nine, just a nine, yeah. So <laughs> I don't know. Somebody says I'd still rather have nine pups than a kid, but I don't actually know about that. But um, so I've... My sort of practice was halted big time over the last couple of years with all that. So you've had a pretty hectic home life then. Yeah, of late. Yeah. But no, it's all good. So you can't uh, you, you play at the weekend and they can all turn around. You can find a bit of form. So well, I'm not being funny. I know, I'd said to you before, and I said it in the bar last night. You weren't drinking, by the way. I'm a bad couple. But um, I said you were, you were queuing brilliantly. Yeah. When no. I, I looked at you when I was. And it's just the, the break let you down, and, it, and it's done so with a few few players. Christoph Lambert, yeah. Ian Ali said it in his interview. He already got. I, don't, I think yeah. he had one one break where he actually parted off, parted from it. And if you're dry all the time, you, you've had it at this yeah. level. This yeah. is the, there's no higher level. No, you, no. So you, you're dead and buried. Yeah, yeah. If you're not getting balls to the break, yeah, yeah, just forget about it. Ian was uh, trying to get Stevie behind the yellow there, but. It wasn't really a big advantage to do that anyway because as long as Stevie didn't move that red off his yellow, it was always still going to be a problem for Ian, so I shouldn't be too worried about not getting Well, this there. is certainly the longest frame I've commentated on this week. Yeah, Stevie, I think, may just... Is he looking to just brush off the red off the side cushion and knock another yellow? Yes, Dempsey going for the loss of turn, so he's going to play cushion into the red and clip the yellow. Yeah, bit of a, bit of a gamble because now he's left the angle. It looks a pretty natural angle for Ian to take this yellow into the bottom left as we look, and it's just going up into the red and yellow. And then the two yellows are sitting open, so it's a bit of a well, even, He could even go wide with a little right hand side, come off the top rail into it yeah. as well, when he's forced to land on the other. It's, went, it's a poor shot for Ian to miss that, really, because it's such a big target. For well, I think I'd have gone for the top rail because I think he's even bigger angle if you get into the middle of that top rail, just yeah. right at the middle of the top rail. You, you're forced to knock it out. He's, he's been a wee bit lucky to land with a nice angle again, but it's not guaranteed to get on the ball. That's he's played that very well. Yeah, he's come out OK. He's come out fine. Made it slightly tricky that he's got to go up the top of the table first, but yeah. with Ian's control, he, you'd think he's, he's going to be able to pull the cue ball past this red and not run into any trouble. There's yeah. nothing in the way of him getting onto the black ball either. That's pretty perfect. Yeah, it was... Um, Fully fancy him to swing this round the two uh, two angles for the black into the opposite pocket. To be fair, if anybody's been missing balls, they've been missing really silly ones rather than anything that difficult. It's even, I think it's everybody seems to concentrate a lot more on the harder parts. Yeah, yeah. But like we were touching on how uh, how Stevie's awareness and frames, so, but that was slipped in, and sometimes that's the best way to do it, as we see Ian. Funny, I commentated one of the end games. Obviously, played in a lot of his breaks goes very close to that corner pocket, and again, just managed to avoid it this time. But well, I don't think you could be playing badly to get to any semi-final of one of these big tournaments. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, it's just um, it's just some something like you want to just keep that cue balls away from them corner bags as much as possible. I have noticed watching Ian quite a bit that it does tend to go up that sort of corner quite often. But for Ian fans, you'd hopefully uh, not have to worry about it too much going forward. Well, we're not going to have the same sort of frame as the last one, that's for sure. No. He's got a long red into the bottom corner. I think he should play, play down for the red, but the black right now. Well, I for some I agree with you, Declan. He's obviously looking to take these. What he's going to try to do is take the red next to the two yellows and then red at the top of the table. Use the one that's into the centre to get down onto that one. Yeah. Black in that centre where the red will go. Mm. That was a bit well, quick. He keyed out a little bit quick, so he did. That is a surprise. Yeah. This, this is... Um, I believe Ian actually hasn't... This is the first time he's made a pass last 32... Or Yeah, made a pass last 32 in one of these events this year, so... Semi-final is a massive match for Ian. Funny enough, when we were commentating in, in Ian Alley's uh, quarter-final was with Sean Story. Yeah. And he said he cannot figure out why for the life of him that Ian Alley has, has not had done so well on these tours. Yeah, it's just... The tour is just that tough, to be honest. It's, it's just the way... I was flying maybe about two years ago and 
a couple of ran into a wall where you're running the performance after performance and then the confidence toward the dips and then you start playing a little bit bad and losing matches you shouldn't and it can happen so I can understand why it's just obviously surprising when you see Ian playing so well all weekend here like why you can't do that every weekend but just the, this game just doesn't pretty good world championships in Morocco didn't you well, that, I played well I, I was but I have been playing well up, up until this weekend really <laughs> but um yeah, so I've sort of been on an upward curve. Blame it on the house move, that's it, and the puppies. Well, it didn't help now. Obviously, you could still make some sort of time, but just, yeah, you have to get your priorities straight for something. something. Or, um, this is a big visit for Stevie now, obviously, when you see Don't Ian. Forget, you've got another tournament coming as well. Yeah, when you see Ian making a mistake like this, yeah. like, obviously, you know, Ian's obviously showed a wee bit of a weakness there, and maybe feeling a bit of pressure and stuff. You want to. You want to sort of pounce on that and win the frame from this visit and really sort of make him suffer Stand in the chair, you, you know. Well, yeah, that's when the old psychological battle comes in. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's massive in, in the pool because you, you might get a chance for another two or three frames after this and you're, you're sitting kicking yourself. So it's every little opportunity you get to really sort of ramp up the pressure on your opponent, you really need to take. He's gonna have to, he's gonna have to play this with a tracer run inside. Not, he hasn't got the greatest angle, but he can. It just makes the yellow actually missable into the corner pocket. Yeah, yeah, playing with so much. Anywhere over towards that left-hand side rail up there, if he can. He's got the two of them into the corner in the middle, so he's got a bigger target to land in than having to get on them. But as you see, this play on the side, he's sort of probably. I think he'll take that. He can play the one into the centre now. I think he'll take the one long. Yeah, he can take the one in the centre and other centre, yeah. Just want to just screw back a, a tad and just leave himself an angle to run down onto the black at the bottom left-hand corner. Yeah. Which he's done pretty well, I think. Just got the slightest of angles to get over there. Yeah, and um, exactly what Stevie wanted was yeah. to... Well, he must have the angle because he won't be down this quick house. Yeah. So he's perfect. It's just exactly what Stevie wanted to do was punish that mistake. Finish the frame off, get one each, and they're saying you can see sort of in certain. We'll be thinking about it now. We'll be thinking it? about it. Yeah, he will. Obviously, uh, now, just, now it goes to Stevie's break. Stevie has a good break. Maybe yep. it's two right. one up, and there's a dry from Ian. I said the easy parts when you actually get into the pros. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're all rubbish when you get there. Yeah. <laughs> there was a joke. Um, well, Ian didn't hit hit the no, break very well there, did no, he? No, he didn't. See what I mean? That cue ball was sort of going up that back up into that top corner. I know he came around, but it sort of always goes up that direction. Or my favourite player watching him break is Jack Whelan. Jack Whelan's got a tremendous break. I watched a bit of him earlier down on one of the side tables as well. Jack, for me, his break is unbelievable. How he controls that cue ball every time. He was playing Hit and Patel, and that that was a close match. Jack just got over the line in that. Um, I was worried for Ian Alley fans if that red was passed him. Interesting, Stevie. Stevie just tried to play a loss of turn shot there without actually still being an open table. And yeah. Very rarely would you see that. And uh, does Ian just knock the yellow and smash into them? I hope Devon comes out. I think reds are the better balls if it, once this yellow goes in. Interesting. Ian's then just set decided. Stevie's onto something here. I'm going to just do what he was going to do to me. Right. He's mm. got a bit of mileage in this frame as well. So this is quite a slow match for what it we're is. used to watching. It is. It's, not, it's no quick outcome here. Yeah, Stevie's going to clip this red in though, and he's going to be happy to take reds now because reds are the better balls, in my opinion. Not too worried about position. Just get the red in the pocket and then. Worry about the rest later. Worry about the rest later. <laughs> No intentions of going for a finish here. He's no. just knock that red in and just see where he can gain the biggest advantage from the first safety shot. Yeah, well, it's too much mess down at the bottom right hand side of the table. Anybody wanting to watch uh, or, or learn about international rules and the tactics involved? Because yeah, pools changed codes or whatever, and people are so used to covering pockets and using that to gain advantage this is a totally different way of Covering playing pockets is not a great shot no, anymore no not it's at not all. I learned that when I first started playing him on the seniors tour yeah uh, a gentleman called uh, I think it was Paul Willis I played I think then and um, there's one frame in particular 
I had, a, I had a bank covered. All my reds were all fairly open. He had a, a full set of yellows. And I thought, I've got him here. I'm going to get a good chance of these. Frame over the match. I think the time was 5-4. He plays the lost turn shot. Yep. Leaves me in the snooker. I've come out, I've hit that ball. And it, he basically part five of my balls, give play loss of turn, and then mopped up his yellows at the yeah, end of yeah. it. And I stood there scratching away, and that was my first schooling at these international rules. Yeah. So I said to him afterwards, I says, you've just taken me to school. Yeah. I said, oh. and it, 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 very clever player. Yeah, yeah. And this is like, people say there's no, there's not much tactic is involved in these these rules. You're, you're very wrong. Yeah. And this is a frame where if people are interested in learning the tactical side of international rules, just keep an eye on this frame because just watch Steve, he's not going to push his red over the corner pocket. No, but that's the thing, like we said. Over the pocket would be a mistake. Yeah. Leave it near the pocket, but, but as awkward as you can to say um, your opponent to, to cannon off it or to play off his own ball and knock it in. Bit of a mistake from me in here, he's given him a, literally a free shot. At I think he goes. Yeah, he has to. He's going to part the red and screw into his other red. Well, he can't fail to screw back and move the red and yellow stuck together, surely. The only, the only thing is, if it's touching ball, I think it is. So he's going to move Ian's yellow out of the way and try and leave Ian back where the cue ball is right now. Like that. Great shot. Now Ian's in a lot of trouble. And this is the this is the thing with Stevie. Obviously, it's a touch of ball. Well, he's got to hit this a bit firm as well, Ian, because not only he's yeah. got to hit his yellow, he's got to hit a cushion after contact if he doesn't pot it. Yeah, a lot of people would have just went game there, but obviously, touching ball allowed Stevie to even take more I'd, control. I'd have gone into the red and just yeah. threw back, but yeah, now Stevie's gone from great good chance of winning to this frame now to a great chance. Now he's got ball in hand. Now he can play whatever he wants. Do you, do you, if you were playing now, would you put the white back where it was behind his red and screw it back in? You're going to say no now because you just watch where Stevie's well, got the cue ball. Yeah, I probably would have uh, looking at it first, but if he can, if he's happy, they can get it out from there. I'm not going to disagree with Stevie Dempsey's decisions at the minute because he's he only got half of that middle pocket for that red. Yeah, you know, Stevie seems to be getting all his decisions 100% right these days and. You can know, just red and it looks No, you can't second guess him, that's for sure. No. Nice shot. Is he on the red to the left of the black as well? Yeah, he yeah. He wants to get rid of that one now, now I would imagine. I'd like a, uh, I would take that, yeah. I was going to say I'd take the one to bulk first. Just drag it in and leave the, the red a distance. Like that. <coughs> now we'll be going for the red next to the black. I'd, I'd have still left that to last ball, f just in my own mind. I yeah. Not those three, go at the top, it's bound to be on the black, you've only got screwed down the table a little bit. This is as good as anything. Yeah, he'll just, he'll just stun this red and just clip, th the, clip the red over the pocket and then leave, leave the cue ball across into the black, into the centre pocket. Yeah, that's right. Just leave yourself a little cut into the corner with the one on the rail. Perfect. And he's starting to get a bit of a stranglehold on the match now. Yeah, he's just, he's just wearing Ian down. You know, he's sort of like we've, we've played half the match, over half the match here, and it's four frames played. You know, it's, it's n this is not Ian Alley. Well, it's it's you know. Stevie Dempsey. If he wins this up, this knocks this black. It's only three one. If you've got the next frame four one, he can actually start thinking about. The clock even yeah just, just yeah of course win. and that's why he's, he's where he is at the minute in the game because he's doing that quite often where he's getting his nose well out in front and then he's controlling the match from there Ian Alley needs Dempsey not to make a ball here that's yeah the only, that's only, hope only, he has. only hope he has a, a cue ball in off or dry break that's, you've seen I think Stevie took a wee bit of pace out of that one because he knows got an easy ball as well he's got a yellow along the bottom Top rail will just play it now and he can yeah. he'll use his extension which he just part a few balls along the flag down as much as he can. Yeah, there's the extension. So he eats away into the clock. He'll pot the yellow in a second. Or shall I say, he won't pot the yellow for about another eight seconds. <laughs> Steve 
coach now addresses this ball into the corner. Perfectly done. And well, you, ha you have to say it's just been a Stevie D-esque performance. It's just been, it's just like it's been doing this for the last 18 months, and uh, he, he just keeps rolling on. And uh, it's for all credit to him. Well, he knows what he's doing, how to manufacture his win. It's uh, this will be his fourth final in um, yeah. three, three, uh, three weekends. So, like that's incredible, sort of standard and well, it's consistency. An incredible level of consistency. Yeah. yeah, at this level as well. Yeah. You know, we're talking. Cream at the top of the pile. Yeah, well, I don't. And Stevie Dempsey again just running the clock down. He's going to be in the final. He's going to be playing the winner of Jordan Shepherd and Chris Mellon, which is going to be a brilliant semi final. And that's coming up straight after this. We're just going to watch Steve Dempsey. He's doing himself there. He won't be too worried now. There's no way back for Ian Alley, and I'm sure Ian Alley would just come up and shake his hand in a second. And there we are. Congratulations. Alley and it's Dempsey who goes to the final of a great display there from Stevie Dempsey. Yeah. He well. has made the final. There's certain players, you know, that obviously that, that, that do start off a little bit rusty. I think Jordan is one of them, but once he gets into the tournament, my God, he's some player. Well, that was borne out with the, his one ultimate pool title to date. The Pro Cup last year got off to a pretty bad start in his first round match and almost got knocked out. And then, as you say, he grew in confidence and was pretty much unplayable. He actually beat Chris Melling en route to that title in one of the quickest matches I think I've ever seen on the ultimate pool circuit. We were thinking the match was about to start and then we found ourselves out there doing the post-match interviews. And only a few minutes seems to have gone down. It's going to be a quick contest between the two. Of them. From what I've seen from some of Jordan's other matches, he looked like he took a little bit off the break there. And obviously, he didn't pot a ball, but certainly he's been hitting the break harder than that from what I've seen so far. It's almost like he just hit a solid break there, maybe first frame, just hoping to, you know, control the cue ball and get a ball but obviously he's dry broke and Melling's played a good first shot there and looks like he's got a good chance to win this first frame. Chris would have been glad to have this slight dinner break. He was complaining and understandably earlier on that he'd been in back to back matches, finished a tough last 16 and then was called straight back on for his quarter final. Kind of inevitable with the format. There were three quarterfinals happening at the same time, so no other way of doing it. But I think he felt like he hadn't had much of time away from the table. So a bit of time to regroup now. Yeah, it's different for different players. So some players like actually like to go on straight away. Um, if you if you win a match, sometimes for certain players it's more comfortable to go on straight away you feel a bit more relaxed but maybe in terms of mailing you know, likes to have a break or whatever between games but with that because having run out that last frame he'd got his opponent sitting in his chair shaking his head he'd been pretty keen to continue that it's going to be much easier for Jordan to put that out of his mind if he's at the table these yellow balls are pretty good well he's played a risky positional shot there but he's played it well he's found his way through the gap Probably plays the yellow below the eight ball now. Probably his toughest ball on the table, and if he could land on the one in the centre of the table after this, well, he's 
chose to want leave the one over the left corner. But yeah, certainly the one in the centre of the table is what he's going to try and get on this shot now. And he's played that really bad. He's hit the potting angle far too thick there and he's come really short. He's trying to leave the one which is in the centre of the table into the left middle there. He's a good potter because this reroute is not an ideal one. Having to go down the table and then back up again. He's describing himself in the pre match interview as being a jack of all trades, referring to the fact that he's been playing a lot of snooker recently. He's then been out to China playing some Chinese eight ball and now finds himself back in the UK playing English eight ball. He might play this shot now. Well, he's, he's looking to leave the yellow fin but could he play this yellow off one of the reds into the corner which would give him the right angle to run through possibly because he's going to leave it very thin otherwise and he has played it but he's hit it too thick if he hit that red thinner he would have potted it and left the lash yellow into the left corner but he's just hit that too thick Yeah, and that was all caused by the ball that he potted over the pocket, getting the angle wrong on that, and then slipped out of position in a spot where it looked like he had the frame sewn up. It was, and the, the reason he potted that too thick was because he had a lot of right-hand side on the, on the cue ball, and he's just straightened up maybe a lot more than he thought, or maybe just mis misjudged the shot, but yeah, he's, he's hit that far too thick and left himself a lot of work to do. here Melin's aiming up the loss of turn shot and what he's also going to try and do is get the cue ball on the bottom rail here probably behind the eight ball has he left the gap though That's a good shot. It was always the risk. It did look like there was a slight gap there. Deliberately played it that way round. He had the chance to play a loss of turn at the top of the table earlier, but that wouldn't have allowed him to get the white safe, which is why he played a slightly unusual previous pot, just trying to get the white right down to that bottom corner to set that ball up. So can Jordan just bend round? Hitting the yellow is OK, but it's just, where is he going to send it? Wow, he almost sent it into the... Opposite corner pocket. But yeah, he certainly had the potting angle there because he, he potted that thick, so I definitely went. Yeah, I mean, it was a slightly tricky shot because he was trying to sort of bend round. It wasn't the most natural, but it's been a very costly outcome because these reds are now perfect for Chris. These are going to be disappearing in no time. found people before the match supporting either player I guess Chris Manning would have been the favourite but wouldn't have been a whole lot in it it's turned out so far to be quite a one-sided scoreline yeah this is certainly not how Jordan's played in his other matches and obviously Manning's not really been on top form should we say and looks like to be going into a 4-0 lead as well so He'll be very happy with that. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you're almost happier when you've got this big lead and you haven't yet played well because Chris is going to know there's more in the tank to come. For a second, like he might come up dry, but the ball's found its way to the left centre. The, the one thing I don't like about Melling's break is the top spin he puts on the cue ball and I just think with the tables these days being so slick I, f I feel like if you put any top spin on the cue ball when you're breaking I think, I think you lose power into the pack and 
the majority of players when they break they either stun the cue ball or screw it back and I do feel like that puts more more power into the pack and obviously Melin is looking to control the cue ball as well and that's the reason he's he's putting a little bit of topspin on the ball Yeah, it's perhaps a slightly older school break. I think it's probably come about because in fact he's played a lot of nine ball as well. I mean, in a way, he's he's playing the break that would be required if the conditions weren't quite so good. Your point about the quality of the tables, it basically means that you don't actually have to play with quite as much power as he's using. So other people who can't hit the ball anywhere near as hard as him are maybe finding a way to yield ways to yield results. By the way. Got one of the best breaks in the game, so he's not going to change immediately while he's getting these results. Speaking of results, that doesn't appear to be the best outcome. He's opened up the pocket as he was intending, but found the cue ball into a bit of an awkward spot. Yeah, that was so unlucky to land there. I mean, he's, he's cannon them balls probably exactly where he wanted to. and the flicks he got for the cue ball to finish where it did was so unlucky. Absolutely must win frameless for Jordan. He's just got to get himself going in this match. I'm not sure about the path of the cue ball there. Did that look right to you? Or I think that was a foul. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's one of those ones that's yeah. played so quickly you can't I think you would conclude you couldn't call it as a foul. Where you're sort of judging it subjectively from the path, which yeah, I, the, I, I the agree path of the cue ball you. wasn't right there, and I'm very well. I don't know, but very surprised that the not check that. Yeah, it's a tough one in, in years gone by, and in sneaker that that's a kind of foul you would call. I think the way the rules are written, unless it's very clear to see now, it's it's pretty hard to. Yeah, it's just the path of the cue ball couldn't possibly go where it did without hitting any yellow balls. Unless it hit the jaw, maybe. Maybe it hit the jaw. Yeah, it actually didn't look so bad from that replay. Anyway, I th think it was probably the only decision that could be made. It all happened so fast, there wasn't any obvious foul you could have called. And the other thing that's happened fast is the rest of that clearance. It's Jordan Shepard finally opening his account. So over the same break where he tries to park the cue ball in the middle of the table. Well, you talked about the topspin earlier on, and that was an example of why having a lot of topspin on the ball isn't necessarily a good thing. Being a little bit unlucky to spin it into the middle like that, but to be honest, it was the best break he hit the whole match, to be honest. And yeah, a little bit unlucky there, I'd say. Yellow is looking at the better suit for Jordan. The problem with the yellows is the fact that the eight ball is blocked by a red at the moment. Yellow ball's in play. Yeah, to be honest, I think I'd have gone for the reds there because the only tough red on the table would have been the red which is on the right hand rail and everything else had a pocket. So what do you do here? Do you leave the yellow ball that's nearest to the eight ball till last and just try to drop that and then get on the eight ball? Or should you try and get to it earlier on? I'm thinking about it with this kind of usual casual demeanour. He really looks like he's worried. I mean, we're talking there. there is a problem ball on the table. He's not really acting like there is. Very instinctive player. Yeah, and he's looking to leave that angle on the last yellow, as you mentioned. If he can just run this through now, somewhere near the red, which is on the side rail. Just missed the part, though. 
Yeah, just thinking about it. it was so important to leave the right angle on the last yellow. That just took his eye off the pot. Very easily done that. Play it off the red, which is on the rail. Obviously, that would be the better ball to play it off, but a little bit tougher to play. And maybe he's just going to go for the finish instead, and it's probably the right thing to do. Yeah, there are times when you can overthink it. He's not even capable of clearing up. It's really only the ball near the right hand middle pocket that's a problem, but he's such a good potter. Can obviously, always play for a double, but if he can drop behind it, That'll be okay too. Well, he's tried to move it, in fact. It really helped. Well, it's not made a massive difference because he hasn't moved it far, but he didn't really want to be knocking it close to the pocket, but not over it. Yeah, I'd be surprised if he doesn't go for the one top left corner now because, for me, the ball he's playing now is his last ball. But he is going to try and play a cannon, and I don't see why he's trying to do that. No, he's tried that cannon twice now. He's just going to have to commit to potting it. Yeah, for me, there's, for, for a player like Mellon, who's such a good potter, if he leaves that red down the rail anywhere anywhere good, he's, he's potting that nine times out of ten and very surprised to see him try and play the cannon. But what would have happened before is if he played that shot earlier, what he's just played now, and left the one nearest to the, the black spot this this ball down the rail would have been a lot easier whereas now he just has to come out a little bit for the eight ball should be all right though where it is but I mean I really can't see Melly missing this ball no if he plays a pocket weight it should be pretty much unmissable and he has got quite a natural angle just to come out doesn't need to put too much on it it's a match that you feel on a different day. It could have been a very different scoreline. Um, will that play a factor? Whereas Chris, has, whenever he's been asked a question, he's managed to find the answer. Um, he had to do that in the last 16 and the quarters, and he made it look easy to be fair to clear up in a minute against Josh Kane. There were a few balls near the cushions, and he just dealt with them. And uh, against Ronan, 6-5 down, he, had, he backed himself to make a very off-angle plant down the rail where he was losing the match if he missed it. So... Um, yeah, he, he's always had that ability to, to do what he needs to in the moment and uh, that maybe gives him great great stead for this final. Well, Stevie gets the first opportunity, he's made a ball, he does have some thinking to do though. One thing to note is a slight change, it is as always in the finals, a race to eight rather than seven. Match clock is still the same, but just the extra frame. Well spotted, I hadn't realised that. You've done a few of these. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it first season it chopped and changed a little bit. Didn't you play one that was first to nine? Yeah, nines. Were, I think I played two first to nines, one against Gareth and one against uh, against Carl Morris. But, yeah, of course, the one against Gareth was to be number one, so I've been in that position talking about the rankings. Yeah, and it did true. play a factor on me. I, t I, th I knew I was going to be number one if I won that match, so um, crazy. Well, the difference there was that was the final, final weekend of the year as well, so it was the Pro Series 7, wasn't it, out of eight? So obviously very... But eight was already done. That was, that was the result was already done effectively because yeah. they were played played the other way around or something something like that. Anyway, regardless, you, you already we already knew. knew yeah. re regardless, it wouldn't be possible to catch if I won the match. Well, this cannon's gone wrong. So can he see anything else? He's having a look, see if he can see right centre. If not, it will be end of chance. I think he's got a little safety, but he's going to have to develop this red and yellow and try maybe snooker the play the white off the cushion back towards the red try and leave Chris snookered on everything I don't, I don't know if you can see the one to right centre but yeah, I think he's just playing the safety where he tries to leave the red where it is and uses a snookering ball not worked out what has he left though try to pot the yellow as well as a loss of turn but yeah, first glance I don't think he's left anything too obvious on Chris should be able to find a good safety here if he puts the cue ball back somewhere near where it is now. Obviously, there's risk with that. 
Yeah, not, not many easy hiding places. He doesn't want to open up this top left area too much because that is Stevie's tricky ball. Should Stevie get sighted at a pot? That one in the top left is the one to work out, but Chris could easily open that up with this shot. So the only balls he can see are those three guarding that red a little bit. He's definitely going to use all his thinking time. There is no obvious shot. Very clever from Stevie to find a way to ask Chris the question there. Oh, could be a time foul. Oh, that was so oh, close. That was very close. What a shot he's played, though. They're going to check it, I believe. Yeah, I think Stevie's asking for it to be I checked. Think it was okay, but it was very close. Yeah. Patricia Murphy, our referee, is going to go and check it just to make sure it's all good. It does make a, a very big difference. Essentially, it's a golden chance for Stevie to win the frame if it's a time foul. If not, he's got some thinking to do. That was very tight. I think he was okay, but again, I'm not, not, not qualified to say that from here. That Sometimes yeah. there's a slight lag in the arena. I, tell you, I have to say, normally I get a pretty good gut feel for whether I think it's a foul or not. I, I'm very much on the fence, probably as much as I ever have been for a time foul. It really looked like he was going to time foul, the way it was popping down, but he just seemed to hit it as the buzzer. Yeah, so our senior referee, Scott Price, has gone to the VAR system. He's currently checking it. How on earth do they do that? Well, you know? th this is the problem that the, the VAR for the time <laughs> foul is so much harder to check. So look at the, yeah, oh. that to me, looking at the, obviously we're not getting the audio of that the at that time, but it looked like it was still on one as he hit it yeah. on the screens. I'd say he's probably okay. Yeah. I don't know if there's a, sometimes there's not the same delay down to zero, is there? But that's so close. If you're going to run it off of that, then there's not always in the shot though, is it? Yeah, the th for me, the one was still showing on the screen as he touched the cue ball. Obviously, we didn't get the audio there on the on the replay, but I think that is going to be fine. I think the referees are happy that that is fine. Got to say, it's a phenomenal shot given he only decided to play that yeah. with about two seconds to go. Yeah, that's one thing we haven't talked about yet. Is, <laughs> is how how good a shot that was in terms of he's put Stevie in, in some real trouble here. It wasn't an obvious shot either. It had to be the touch on that. You can see the two reds he's had to cover. Has he covered it, though? Stevie doing I it. From the overhead we saw, I'm pretty sure he has, but must have done. No oh. way. <laughs> oh. Well, there you go. We thought he's in trouble. <laughs> I think yeah. he's had to kind of maybe, well, the white wasn't spinning. He's maybe to put a fraction of right-hand side on there or but bounce the cue ball slightly, is he? I mean, look at that. It doesn't look like it's yeah. on at all. But the time foul still makes a very real difference because the red that's left near the, the break line is a, a problem that he has to try and get onto. So if he had cue ball in hand, he would have just put himself on that ball and, and then it was going to be fairly routine. Yeah, and does it go top right now? It only really goes bottom right, if not, realistically, without moving the yellows. He's trying to get up there now. He must go to the right corner then, top right. Touch short, In which case it wasn't it. as bad as I thought first, first glance. Still done well to get there, to be fair. He's obviously had this plan all along. This is what the thinking time was from Chris's shot just making sure he could land the cue ball here as early as possible ideally it would have been like Dutch been a bit higher up the table oh, did he have the whole pocket yeah that's as big a wide as we've seen from Stevie Dempsey in, in what feels like a few months to be honest missed it thin as well you think you'd no I don't think there's the full pocket there how close to get to this yellow pretty close so yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't think he had much pocket to aim at you still rather <laughs> rather hit the ball in the way. I hate missing the things. Well, I wouldn't have potted it anyway, you know. So I'd rather rather hit the ball in the way than uh, than miss it thin. I just think at least it could have been going for the pocket. But uh, always easy to miss those. Very good chance then for Chris Melling to get this first frame on the board. Got to say, phenomenal shot he found. It took him a full 45 seconds and did well to find. Even though he didn't actually cover everything for Stevie. Very Amazing, amazing how much that overhead is. Uh. But the main thing is he didn't disturb that area, so Stevie still had to, and that obviously was tight. But yeah, just a little bit edgy from Stevie. Uh, where he looks so solid it, nearly every time I see him play, so... I don't know if he does get a little bit more nervous for a final or not. I'm not, I'm not suggesting he does, but he well, makes so few mistakes. Yeah, it could be, obviously, the fact that he's been in a number of finals and they've not all gone his way. I mean, the two against Tom don't really count. He didn't no. get any chances, so you know, didn't I know, get, I know didn't he lost those two. But yeah, didn't get eight chances in, in two <laughs> finals, let alone one. 
unbelievable from Tom Cousins. And then he's obviously beat Arf and Dad in the other Pro Series and he's lost to Craig Woodingham in the Champions League. So, Yeah, so realistically, if he was only in two of those finals, then uh, he's won one of them. Still amazing to, to keep just getting to the latter end. This format is so volatile. I know he manages the clock well and he's really elevated his game. Yeah, Mick's on three, Chris is on two. Shane's someone who's disappeared a little bit off the old Maporta in terms of that. You know, like, um, yeah, he was right at the top, wasn't he? That, that first season in particular, what a break. That really is very clever how he does that. I might be right in thinking that that record I said about Chris Melling being a new player to win in every season, I think it's only Shane that can catch him with, uh, yeah, Shane's with that won, front. Shane's won, won, won in season one and two, hasn't he? So yeah, he has, yeah. So he could, but Chris has already won a title this year. He has, yet. Yeah. He won. Pro Series 2 at the start of the year. Beat Callum Singleton in the final. Tom's won one in every year he's played. Obviously he wasn't yeah. there for Season 1 as well and still has still picked up the most silverware of anybody so far. With the six trophies, two of those in non-ranking events, otherwise he would be miles in front in the rankings. First break for Chris gives Stevie an opportunity. Keep an eye on the breaks. We do think, even though that was a back and forth opening frame, I think the breaks are still going to be absolutely huge in this match. I just see Stevie potting walls. I don't know why, because Chris has hit them fantastically well, but he's just taking a slight gamble for me with this, this top spin break, just that you're not quite hitting them full power. It's, it's very If you watch the slow motion, he actually aims a you know, below the middle, pulls the cue right back past the cushion, so right to the very back of his hand, over, over the edge of that cushion, if you like, and then the cue hits just above centre, but then dips down. He kind of follows through under. Hopefully we get a slow-mo of it so I can kind of describe it. But yeah, we'll look up for that for the, for the next break. It's very clever how he does it. If you watch where the tip actually hits, and then almost immediately after hitting the cue ball, it kind of goes towards the bed of the cloth, so he's, he's just timing it perfectly. Very hard to do. He must have practiced it because he's been doing it for a good, a good season now, I suppose, this this break. Stuck with it. Occasionally he goes to the cut break. Yeah, he will chop and change quicker than a lot of players, but I think he when he turns up a, a tournament, he feels settled with it and sticks with it. The results are there. Yeah, I mean, his, his the record speaks for itself, really, and especially given that, you know, this isn't his full-time... Uh, Q sport if you like he certainly spends as much time in China and as much time playing American pool as well he's in everything as far as those two sports are concerned and nine ball pool's getting bigger and bigger at the moment as well off the back of maybe or, or as well as ultimate pool getting bigger and bigger so yeah the only one that he's not playing a huge amount of anymore is the, the snooker but yeah Chinese even then American. I wouldn't fancy playing him on that table <laughs> no, either <I> so <laughs> Very talented to do. I mean, Tom came back from China and just said it felt like he was playing with a matchstick, which is how I've felt before coming coming back from China or, or from nine boys playing on nine ball myself. So very nice. hard to mix them. John McAllister and Daniel Randall were watching on. Former world champion on the Port Pro and of course women's series champion at the beginning of the year, Danielle. When's the last woman standing? That's not far away, is it? Yeah, a couple coming of qualifiers up. we just had. It's 21st, 22nd of October, I believe. Really looking forward to that. And of course, Stevie will be involved in Ultimate Pool Island's last man standing, which is coming up at the end of October. Really looking forward to that one. Declan in that as well. He is, yeah. All the, top, oh. all the top Irish stars are there, yeah. Really good event. That would be great for you. And Stevie Dempsey gets the reverse clearance to get going as well. Very nice for Stevie. He's on the board. Are they back straight? They look slightly off to me. Slightly tilted. Slightly tilted to the right. Looks okay to me. Could be my eyes. Wasn't much, but oh wow, really, really. <laughs> it's yeah. Well, it's another dry break for Chris Melling. When he makes a ball, he makes the clearance. Just can't get a ball enough. Big cheer then from the crowd for Stevie to try and find something here, but this is far from a a good chance. They do support each other well, the Irish. Don't yeah, they? really they good. Don't get the same from uh, from us this side of the pond. For once, Stevie's got some work to do off Chris's break, where he's the great first shot. There was a lot of distance between those balls. 
Would have loved an angle now to deal with his other problem. That red by well, those two yellows. Don't think he can do anything with it here. The three, three reds together in the middle of the table aren't that easy to work out either. Doesn't want to be hampered here. He's just stopped in time to give him some access to the middle of the cue ball. Going to have to play a developing shot, is he? Or is he? Oh, he's got the plant. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, oh it would have been the plant then, the developing shot, but plant doesn't drop. That's the toughest chance Stevie's had yet, I think, though, in all honesty. Um, the sort of chances Chris has been getting all match. Stevie's missed early in his chance, making it a difficult layout for Chris Melling still. That hasn't helped. A bit ambitious first shot, but obviously wanted to miss that. Yellow near the wheel, and the 15 seconds has really kicked in. Not much time to think. Even Chris is one of the quickest players out there. And is uh, oh, what a shot, what a shot. Bit oh. unlucky. <laughs> it's so good. Developing and the double. That yellow's gone about to the most awkward spot on the table. Stevie's shaking his head. This is still so awkward from here for Chris. Very good shot. But he's really trying to do that, push the red to the cushion. If he catches the yellow and puts the yellow on the cushion, he's in a world of trouble. So, Very good shot. That yellow must sneak in the right middle. He doesn't seem concerned with it. The last ball I'm talking. Oh, no. Oh, no. Delicate. They're always delicate in the middle. You just don't expect players to miss them. They're not that easy. But you get a feel with 4 minutes 35 left. This is an opportunity for Stevie to break the back of this match. Create a two-frame separation. Have the next break. Really control the clock here. Well, there's a good minute. A minute to come off the clock. There's going to be three minutes left by the time Stevie finishes this visit. Which makes you feel two frames in front of you. Makes the ball off the next break. It's not done, but it's he's controlling the whole clock and he's very good at that and with the cue ball running time as well I'm you know, making it about three minutes left good two or three seconds of movement on the cue ball there <laughs> just it eats a bit more clock see the clock restart now so we're etching towards these 50 seconds will get used in these next three shots down to three minutes roughly Chris will need the next two chances really and even then he can probably only force a six red shootout at best should he even get those opportunities simple enough eight ball clench of the fist as well Stevie knows how big this is and he's going to wait for the full allotment of time here every second to his advantage even tops the cue ball through just to take another couple of seconds off. <laughs> Subtle, but another couple off. Two frames in front, very little time left in the match. If he doesn't make a ball, you never know. Nothing dropping, nothing oh, dropping. He's got one. Oh, it's going to go, and look at the layout for him. It's very good. It's good to manage the clock. It's not necessarily the easiest finish, but he can take a, all the time out of the match here. Chris, if Chris does come back to the table, there'll be a minute remaining. And he'll have to win two frames. Stevie was riding it there, <laughs> focusing on that ball the whole way. Yeah, there's a slight problem at the bottom. Stevie's just going to pot out, surely. Yeah, he's going to go for reds because of the problem at the bottom on the right hand side. And he'd be disappointed, I think, that he didn't get the cannon on the yellow there. I think he wanted to come down for these two to the middle. Do you think? I think he was, was trying to hit the yellow full, but. He would have been straight, maybe. Yeah. I think he played this. Obviously, wants to come a bit further down the table. So yeah, obviously, the two on the right-hand side are slowing him down in terms of the the clearance. But this is about using the clock up. This is. He's got to drift up to the top cushion now. Unless this bottom red goes, I'm not sure if it does. If he's got to play the top red, he just needs to float to the top cushion, then play the cannon. 
depending how this comes out. This this is it. If he lands on a ball here, Chris hasn't then got enough time to clear up twice. So if this doesn't come out, Chris will have about a minute and 15 seconds to try and make two clearances. He's fine. Yeah, that's the match. Even if Stevie misses, I just don't think Chris has really got enough time. Because yellows aren't easy anyway. But yeah, you can't see Stevie missing. Stevie just isn't missing. This He's is still the one on the right-hand side. But every second is like torture for Chris Melling. He needs two clearances, remember. No golden breaks in play. This is the victory lap you called it, Simon. Uh, it'll just be a safety now. I don't think he'll do anything silly. He won't try and get this red moving towards the pocket. Won't risk putting the eight ball. Just, just uh, let the cue ball run a little bit. And Chris does not have enough time. Oh, what a shot! What a shot! The treble for good measure. What a shot! He didn't need to do that, but uh, yeah. is he on the eight ball? He's just sign risk off in style. The yellow on the way through, just play the treble. Play the treble to the right middle. There's no point risking it if it's tight. So you glaze that yellow on the way through. Yeah, that's fine. It's done. Look at the way he's put the cue ball as well. There's only 20 seconds left. Chris can't clear up twice, but Stevie's still making sure. Yeah, amazing. Always thinking out there for Stevie. No thoughts of knocking that eight ball in, but he is. <laughs> he will get to eight. Chris Melling knocks the eight ball in, and the hammer has done it again. Stevie Dempsey with his second Pro Series title. He did it last time we were here in Blackpool. He has done it again. The Irishman is flying at the moment. Present. Your champion, Stevie Dempsey.